Okay there guys, welcome to Lopsided Learning and today we are going to be making, if my camera can stand still here, um, salt dough um, pendants or tags or whatever it is you might want to make with your salt dough that we're going to make today. Um, there's only three ingredients that it needs, and I'll get into that, um, but I wanted to make sure you guys knew that you're also going to need um, paint brushes, and you're going to need some acrylic paint if you plan on painting your creation. We'll just call it that. And go ahead and set your oven to 250 degrees, um, and that's what we're doing today. So let's get started. First things first, for those of you like me, these things here, these beauties, our rings, yeah, we're going to take those off and we're going to put them in there. And this is a different type of clay here. This isn't one of the salt um, mixes for clay. Um, this is actually polymer, polymer clay and I will do another video on that. Um, but yeah, my son made me that. But put, take your rings off because you're going to get them, your hands dirty and it's hard to get things out of stuff. And then what I've got here, my friends, are the items you're going to need that are not food related. So you need a metal baking pan. For some, I have a pizza pan because I think all my other pans are in use for some reason. Um, you're going to need a toothpick. Um, if you're making the pendant to poke a hole through, um, there's other options out there. You, I mean, you can even use like a, I don't know, if you're into Legos or Star Wars, you can even use like a lightsaber for heaven's sakes to poke a hole. Um, anyway, I have to get my Star Wars in. You also need a chopping board. And that's where we're going to be kind of getting the clay going. And you're going to need one of these goodies. A good old-fashioned wooden spoon okay then you're of course are going to need yourself a beautiful mixing bowl and I think that should be just fine considering um, how much we need and then these here I'm going to show you now these are the items needed so these are the three ingredients that I was talking to you guys about earlier so the only three ingredients you need hopefully you have them on hand you need a half cup flour. Don't worry, I already measured it out. You will also need one fourth cup of water and then just one fourth cup of salt. Okay. Now, optional, yes. Practical also. Let's come over here. Optional cookie cutters or templates. Now, not only do cookie cutters make good templates for paper, but they also are wonderful for salt dough. I'm sure um, kiddos out there and people have used this before. Um, we're going to use it to make a pendant, though. Um, so I just got some smaller ones that I had out. Okay? So we know we're going to start preheat our oven to 250. We know all the ingredients and things that we need, um, all the items, and um, I think we're ready to get started making our lopsided learning pendants or figurines. All right. Okay, hi guys. I am back, and we're going to start doing our mixing now that we've gone over everything that we need. The first thing you're going to do is we have to mix the two dry ingredients we have. So, we have our half a cup of flour and we're just going to pour it right on in. Ta -da! Then our fourth cup of salt, pour it in. And now what we're going to do is we're going to mix the dry ingredients. So the flour and salt are going to be nicely mixed together. And this is my son the other day we made this and he asked if we could eat it. I, I'm like, it wouldn't be very good to be very salty. <laughs> Yucky. But anyway, so we stir it. And it looks like it's mixed up pretty good. 
Now with the water, we're going to do it a little bit differently. We got to go slowly, slow increments. Okay, so I'm going to do a little bit just to wet in that flour and salt mixture. And probably I should have said this earlier, but wear a messy shirt or an old shirt with holes in it or something, just in case you get dirty. Then again, it's just flour, so it won't really hurt anything. You're probably going to be in more trouble come time to paint, but we'll get there in a minute. That would be like way steps ahead of ourselves. A little more water. All right. It is absolutely amazing what you can just do with three ingredients and the really nice things you can make. All right. The last the water is going in. Getting it in there good. Mixing it around. Reminds me a little bit of pizza dough or something. Look at that. <laughs> Mix, 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 mix. So it's kind of crumpled up, but what I'm gonna do is I took my rings off and I'm gonna get in there. And I'm, I, it's just a lot easier, I think, when you can get a hold of the dough. And I know a lot of people might not like the sensory feeling of dough. It doesn't bother me much. And of course, I'm, I'm an OT. Um, so I like these sensory experiences, um, or I've learned to like them, or I've adapted to them, maybe you want to say. But this is a neat little sensory, um, a neat little sensory experiment along with arts and crafts and eye hand coordination. And here I go getting into all of the good things this has to offer. Just make it meaningful. I'm going to be making a pendant, but if you truly just want to make yourself a figurine or something else, please do. It's got to be meaningful to you or else there's no reason to do it. But these three ingredients in everybody's home, I hope, <laughs> and we're going to do some really cool things with it. So I'm pretty happy with what I've got. Yeah, I'm going to take these little extra pieces and put them in the bowl off to the side. And I'm going to move my little bowls for tidying up later and put them aside. It's always the worst part is cleanup. <laughs> All right, I've got my cutting board here. So this is where I'm just going to knead. I'm kneading the dough. And what I'm going to do is just keep on doing this and make it up into a nice little ball. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to come back after I wash my hands and such. And we are going to make ourselves either a pendant or figurine or whatever it is you would like. Thanks for tuning in. Stay tuned, I'll be right back. Okay, hi guys, I am back. Sorry, my camera was giving me a few more issues as usual, but it's okay, we got it taken care of. So here I am with our salt dough and we're about to make a couple pendants and I'm super excited. So I have kneaded up the dough and now I'm going to turn it into this ball. Um, it feels so nice. It's a nice sensory experience. It feels really cool and, you're, and you'll start to feel like when it's ready. They will know by the consistency and I'm rolling it up, rolling it up, rolling it up. And now I am going to press it down to get to a nice, even kind of level. It doesn't have to be perfect. One of the good things about doing a salt coule project is you can just have fun with it. It's not like it costs a ton of money and you can make it your own. Okay. There's nothing like making your own things, especially when they are gifts. Um, okay. So let's take... Oh, let's take a heart. Let's start with a heart. So I am going to make a heart pendant. So I've chosen to go ahead and use my cookie cutters. Um, but even though I'm going to use my cookie cutters, I might change it around just a little bit. So let's see. I'm going to push it in. Like so. See it? 
And then what I'd like to do is I push all the way down is to peel the dough off around it. I don't know why. I think it's my sensory um, experience that I love so much, but I never did when I was a kid. But um, I can knead it back up into a ball. Ooh. All right, back to the heart, back to the heart. So here it came out beautiful. One beautiful heart. Now I'm going to put it on the pan that we're going to use to cook. And I'm going to lay it down on there. And then I'm just going to do a little bit of light, gentle touch on it to make sure it's exactly how I want it. And then don't forget this. If you're making a pendant, you got to have a nice hole through it. Make sure it goes all the way through. Okay. If you need to flop it over to check. Okay. Okay. This is going to be really a really nice one. Got the hole punch through all the way through. Perfect. That is a perfect heart. No way. Right. It's so amazing. I'm going to try one more thing because I like to get a little creative so you guys can try something a little bit interesting and fun if you want. So what I'm going to do is just try to quickly flatten this out. And I'm going to use the heart one more time. Oh, look at that. Peel it away. <laughs> there we go. That's so fun. I mean, this is for people of all ages. This is just so much fun. Okay. So I got my cookie cutter, I pulled it out. Beautiful heart again, if I do say so myself. Now with this heart, I'm gonna get a little funky. But before I do that, I'm gonna put it on the plate. Well, not the plate, but the uh, baking pan that happens to be a pizza pan. Um, so here we go, I'm putting it on. And all I'm gonna do, guys, is take some of these other cookie cutters I have. I'm going to use this one. This is like a flowery type one. And I'm going to make a pattern in my dough because it looks really cool. So you obviously don't push down all the way, but it's going to give it some texture when it comes to you, like after you cook it, you're going to cook it. And then after it's done cooking, it could take up to two to three hours. You got to let it cool for a long time. And when you take it out, you got to make sure it's dry. But after all that, then you get to paint it. And the cool thing is, if you do something like I'm going to show you, you're going to have a nice texture. So I am going to take my heart, this one. I'm going to poke the hole first just so I don't make any errors when it comes to making a textured heart. Because that'll look really cool. And I'm checking to make sure it went all the way through and it did. And making sure it maintained its shape and it did. So here I go. I'm just taking this flower thing and I'm just going to make little marks. Just little marks across. Like I said, not too deep. Just enough to give it like some definition and character. The good thing though is it's salt clay, so you can always, if you don't like your pattern, you can always just redo it. But I'm kind of liking mine. It's reminding me a little bit of some waves, and it even kind of reminds me of the American flag or something. Well, maybe I'll put a couple up here. Cool. Or stripes or patterns, whatever. So all I did was take a different cookie cutter. And then I just lightly pressed it down on my heart just to give it some definition and texture. Okay. So this is something you guys can do too. And when it comes time to paint, it's going to be so fun because then you can decide, you know, if you want to paint different colors in the different areas, but we'll talk more about that when it comes time to paint. Anyway, guys, I'm going to go throw these in the oven and we'll see what we turn up with. Okay, guys, it has been 
a while, about 24 hours since we have done the salt dough recipe. Um, I ended up cooking my creations for almost three hours it took me in my stove last night. So I just brought out a couple because I did end up doing more, but here's the hearts, the texture one, the one that's basic. Um, and now that they've cooled, you really want them to cool. You can't be quick to paint them. Um, so now that they're cool, you're going to need acrylic paint. You're not going to want like an alcohol based paint or something like that. It's not going to work. So acrylic paint, I hope you have some on hand. Um, I have quite a bit just because I've um, been an OT and a enrichment teacher for a while. So um, I have a lot of stuff, but um, there's different brands you can buy and they all seem to work pretty good in my opinion. Um, there's um, Craft Smart. Um, this is a gold color. I think we use this for an ancient Egyptian project, making a sarcophagus. And then we have a, um, the other brand we have is called Folk Art. Folk Art. Um, and that's another great brand to use. Um, same thing with, this is Folk Art too. Now these are all here, these are all metallics. And I kind of like a tell metallic excuse me when i make my pendants um or things like that but you can do whatever you want to do um and of course you can always use um one of these types of tubes of acrylic this is basics um and you can get this relatively cheaply okay guys so i know that a lot of you are stuck at home so if it's tricky to find an acrylic paint i will tell you you can, if you have Sharpies at home that are colorful and if it's okay and you're an adult and you know what you're doing, you can use them if you're in a pinch. Um, they don't look anywhere near as beautiful as they would with the acrylic, but it will work um, for you in a pinch, okay? Um, so I wanna show you, I already painted one and I used Let's see, there we go. This is the one I did that little design on um, where we took the cookie cutter and just kind of gave it some, some definition. And I used the green metallic on it. Um, it reminds me of an old car, a Jeep I used to have. Green is my favorite color. Um, if you know me, you know that probably pretty well. Um, and I only, this is only one, one one time that I put the acrylic on, which I was quite surprised about because oftentimes you need multiple. So I'm wondering if the metallics don't take as much. Could be, I don't know. So basically guys, all you gotta do is decide what paint you want. And I, real quick, I'll do this because it'll run. I picked up my emerald looking color, my gold color a copper looking color and a metallic blue color, all metallics. Um, and then you just take a plate and decide what you're gonna do. Since I already showed you that one, I'm gonna show you this one. So this is just my basic heart and I'm probably just gonna just take a paintbrush. I have paper towels on hand just in case along with a little bit of water, just in case, in case you, you might want to do multicolors. If you do, let the other side or part dry before you do the other side, or you know what I'm saying. So this is what we're gonna do. I like my green, but I wanna do a blue heart because I have someone in my life who loves blue hearts, well, blue in particular, but a heart extra special. We always, always, always end our text messages with me having a green heart and her a blue. So this, this is what we're gonna do. I'm gonna paint it. And I'm just using basic little, little paint brushes. And we're just gonna put it on. And I just use paper plates underneath. Um, nothing too fancy. Um, paint as much as you can. 
You're going to have to go back and do the bottom, but once this side dries, but that's okay. And there we go. It doesn't take acrylic paint long to dry. Sometimes, some people even say it's 20 to 40 minutes to dry. It's really not that long, depending on how thick you put it on. So it's not like you're going to spend a lot of time um, waiting for it to dry like with some other things you might. Look at that beautiful blue heart. I know just who it's going to. Okay. And I do like the look of it. Now, I'm noticing, guys, that my hole for where my heart is, um, it's getting covered up a little by the paint. So all I'm gonna do is take the back of my paintbrush and just go doop into it to make sure the paint doesn't stop it from going through. When we, I, this one I'm going to put on a string or I'm not sure yet how I'm going to do this, um, but that's what I'm going to do. So there it is, my blue heart. And when it dries, I'll finish the other side. And if it needs another coat, just go ahead and give it another coat. So this is how you make salt and dough like salt flour dough clay um and you work it and you cook it and voila i'll catch you guys next time if you do like this video please give it a thumbs up or a like or whatever i wonder if you could do a thumb hit that would be cool and then don't forget to subscribe because we have some more videos coming up very shortly have a great night guys and stay healthy and happy